I'm Johan Dreisma, Senior Product Manager of OpenVPN Access Server, and I'm here to give you a very quick primer on access control on OpenVPN Access Server. So let's briefly explain the concept of access control. In this example, the user on the left, connected to the access server in the middle, would have access only to network resource one on the right. From the very first release of OpenVPN Access Server, it has had the ability to define exactly which network devices each individual user was allowed to access. In contrast, some other simpler VPN solutions would just grant every VPN user access to the whole network, so basically all the resources on the right in this example, and then any further controls were based on credentials or other measures. In the past few years, the term ZTNA has become quite popular. The basic tenet of ZTNA, or Zero Trust Network Access, is to give only the required access to resources to each individual user and device. This is what our products do. Full tunnel and split tunnel redirection are two concepts of how network traffic from a user device is handled when it has to transport data through a secure VPN tunnel. In the example on the left, the user device is connected to the VPN server and all network requests must go through the VPN server. In typical situations on Access Server, this results in network requests of the user device appearing to come from the Access Server private or public IP address. This makes firewall whitelisting of online applications pretty easy. On the right, however, we have split tunnel redirection, where only certain network resources have to be reached through the VPN server and other network requests just go through the network and the internet as usual. The model on the right is typically used to grant secure access to specific protected network resources with strict access control. Before we dive into a practical example, let's look at the basic operating principle of access control on OpenVPN Access Server, particularly in the case of split tunnel. The access works additive meaning you start out with no access at all and you build up from there. There are three layers in which access can be granted. There is the global layer, the group layer, and the user layer. Each successive layer allows you to define access rules and these are added up to derive what the user has access to. So let's look at this in a practical example. Here we have two users that need access to specific resources. Both of them may have access to resource 1 with IP 10.0.0.1, but only user B may have access to resource 2 with IP 10.0.0.2. So in our example, all users may have access to resource 1, so this can be a global access control rule. On top of that, we grant only user B access to resource 2. Let's see how this is done in Access Server. In the web-based admin interface of the Access Server, you can go to Configuration and then VPN Settings page. Here in the section titled Routing, we can configure the global access control. By setting the first option to Yes using NAT, we are telling the Access Server that all groups and users may have access to resource 1, IP 10.0.0.1. The slash 32 you see here means that we want just this one IP address. This is CIDR address formatting which will be familiar to most network administrators. And NAT means network address translation, which makes implementation of our solution easier as no additional routing in your network will be required. Next, we go to user management and then user permissions. We locate the user B and click on the pencil icon under more settings for this user. This expands the available options for that user. In the section titled Access Control, you can add resource 2 with IP 10.0.0.2. Again, with the slash 32 to indicate we want just this one IP. And again, access is granted using NAT for ease of implementation. And that's it. Now the practical example of access control has been implemented. On the global level, we have granted access to 10.0.0.1 to all users and groups on the access server and only user B has access to 10.0.0.2. Let's do one more practical example that involves groups. Let's look at this example a little closer. 
we have defined a group alpha that has access only to resource 1 at 192.168.100.1. Any user that is assigned to group alpha will inherit that access to resource 1. Group beta has access only to resource 2 at 10.0.0.1. Any user that is assigned to group beta will inherit that access to resource 2. So basically, we have two groups that each have different access control rules, and users get access to those resources based on their group membership. At the bottom, we are going to make an exception for user A, who is part of group alpha. On top of the access he inherits from group alpha, which is resource 1, he also needs access to resource 2, which in our example is normally only accessible for members of group beta but we make an exception for just this one user so that we can get access to resource 1 via his group membership and access to resource 2 because we give this specific user that additional access. So let's see how to do this in Access Server. We first have to start out by getting rid of any global access control rules. So we go to Configuration, VPN Settings, Page again. This time we set the first option to no. This tells the access server that we don't want to grant any global access, but that we want to do this on a group or user level, which allows us to be more granular in our access control. Then we go to group permissions and set up the permissions for the group alpha. We locate group alpha and click on the pencil icon under more settings to see more configuration options. The access control option must be set to yes, and then we can give group alpha access to resource 1, which is at 192.168.100.1. Now all users that are a member of group alpha will be able to access this resource. Now we configure access for group beta. We give group beta access to resource 2 at 10.0.0.1. This will give access to this resource to all users that are a member of group beta. Now we assign a user A to group alpha. This is done under user permissions, where the group can be selected in the group dropdown. And finally, we will go into the more settings portion for user A, so that we can grant him access to one more resource on top of the one he inherits from group alpha. This is the exception we spoke of in the overview earlier. User A will be able to access resource one because he inherits this from group alpha and he will be able to access resource 2 because we will specifically grant this user that additional access. Other users assigned to group alpha will not be able to access that second resource unless you also give those users that additional access. So in conclusion, we have now achieved this particular practical example with groups. That concludes this brief presentation. Thank you for your time and attention.